The fourth volume of our British Railway series explores some of the secondary lines which were once a feature of Mid and South Wales and the Welsh marches. The first part of the programme takes us along the southern section of the now preserved Seven Valley Railway from Kidderminster to Bewdley. The railway from Bewdley to Tembury Wells and Wolferton was built by two separate companies. The section from Wolferton to Tembury opened in August 1861. Services began on the line between Bewdley and Tembury three years later in August 1864. This is Kidderminster Junction on the 22nd of July 1961. The train passing the engine shed is the 1040 Saturdays only to Bridge North. This service does not call at the now closed Foley Park Halt. The train enters Bewdley Tunnel. On today's SVR, the section between Kidderminster Town and Bewdley South Box is worked on the acceptance lever system. Tokens are no longer required. It is surprising how little has changed at Bewdley over the years. The locomotive on the Bridge North train is a 41XX tank. The Bewdley North signalman gives the token for the next section to Arley or Hiley to the driver. The right hand signal on the bracket at the end of the platform gives the driver authority to proceed down the Seven Valley branch. But our interest today lies in the connecting service. XGWR railcar W20W will form the 1110 Saturdays only train to Wooferton. The track bed of the branch to Tembury can still be seen today where it diverges from the Seven Valley line just north of Bewdley station. The piers of the Dowles Bridge which carry the line over the River Seven still stand, but the decking has long since been demolished. This is a view which is no longer possible to obtain, looking down the river towards Bewley from the bridge. The line climbs steadily through the forest, on a ruling grade of 1 in 70. The first stop was at the station appropriately called Wire Forest. The climb continued to a summit near Clubbury Mortimer, the next station, once the junction for the Clubbury Mortimer and Ditton Priors light railway. Passenger leaves the rail car at Nien Solaris. Generous siding accommodation is provided at the next station, Newnham Bridge. The railcar arrives at Tembury Wells. The last stop before Wolferton was Eastern Court. The railcar swings round the curve and into Wooferton Station. In years gone by, trains from Tembury had crossed the main line and used the bay platform on the other side.
As passengers board the rail car for the return journey, an express bound for Shrewsbury, powered by a Hall Class 460, passes through the station at speed. From Wolverton to Tembury, this line, like the Shrewsbury to Hereford route, was jointly owned by the Great Western and the London North Western companies. From Tembury to Bewdley, it was the sole property of the GWR. Many workings from both Bewdley and Wolverton terminated at Tembury. As befitted a line often worked in two parts, the two sections closed on different dates. The Wolverton to Tembury section lost its passenger service on the 31st of July 1961 shortly after Keith Christie had made this record of this part of the line. Passenger trains continued to run between Bewdley and Tembury until the 1st of August 1962. In March 1961, when the whole line was still open, an ex-GWR railcar changes platforms at Tembury before returning to Bewdley. The railcar passes the staggered platforms at Nien Solars and arrives at Clubri Mortimer. As mentioned earlier, this was the junction for the Clubbury Mortem and Ditton Prize Light Railway, which opened its 18 mile line as late as 1908. Its independent existence lasted only to 1922, when it was taken over by the Great Western. Though it lost its passenger service in September 1938, the line remained open for traffic to a large Admiralty storage depot, Ditton Prize, until April 1965. By this time, freight services between Bewdley and Wolferton had ended. It was the erstwhile light railway traffic which postponed for a short time at least the final closure of the Bewdley to Clubbury Mortimer section until April 1965. This was the platform used by trains for Ditton Priors. A railcar bound for Tembury arrives from Bewdley. Pours at Wire Forest before heading back to Bewdley. The Southern Valley Line is on the left of the picture as we approach Bewdley. The junction between the two lines was at the north end of Ribbon Hall Viaduct, just outside Bewdley Station. At Bewdley, the red and cream railcar from Wolferton, W20W, departs for Kidderminster. As a new BR multiple unit arrives on platform three. The other former GWR railcar in BR green livery with the so-called speed whiskers, yellow warning stripes, heads out of the station bound for Bridge North and Shrewsbury. Our final scenes at Bewdley are of a large 262 tank and a GWR towed brake van probably bound for the colliery sidings north of Hiley. They have to wait for enough goods to clear the single line section from Arley. Most of the rest of our program is set in Wales and there were few more spectacular railway settings in the Principality than this, the Crumlin Viaduct, which carried the Great Western Line from Pontypool to Aberdare and Merthyr. A coal train headed by a Great Western 280 and banked by an 062 tank crosses the viaduct. This is the view from the viaduct. Down below is the line to Aberdeeg and Ebervale. The platforms of Crumlin Low Level Station can just be glimpsed below.
This was the occasion in May 1957 when Crumlin High Level was on the itinerary of a rail tour hauled by the famous GWR 440 City of Truro. O62 tank 6652, a member of a Great Western class long associated with the railways of South Wales, is here seen at Hirawain on the line between Merthyr and Neath in July 1961. Our filmmakers have come to this part of Wales to explore the lines which ran north from Neath and Newport to Sir Brecon. These were built by the Neath and Brecon and the Brecon and Merthyr companies, which at first had separate stations at Brecon, though by 1872 both companies' trains used the station at Free Street. Where the two companies' lines made an end-on junction, built to capture some of the traffic of the South Wales coalfield and with designs and expansion beyond the area they served. By the 1960s, the northern parts of both routes had limited passenger services and were to close not long after these films were made in 1961 and 1962. This is Neath Riverside Station on the 8th of July 1961. The train is the 4.10 p.m. for Brecon in charge of an ex-GWR 57XX Pannier 8760. The token for the single line section ahead is collected at Caddickston Junction. The train approaches Kilfriu. I collects the ticket from a lady leaving the train. Tokens are exchanged at Krainanth. Baskets containing racing pigeons are carefully loaded into the train. Behind Seven Sisters Station can be seen the colliery of the same name, one of many served by the line between Kilfriu and Kolbren Junction. Where the line from Neath was joined by the branch from the Yesterday Glynlais and Swansea, at the junction on the 18th of September 1962, 57XX Pannier tank number 3621 arrives with a train from Neath. <laughs> Leaving Colbrain Junction, the line begins the climb to Craginos Pinthwilk through wild open moorland a world away from the mining valleys to the south. The train leaves the remote station at Kraginos Pinthwilt, which once boasted a private waiting room for the great operatic diva, Adriana Patti, whose house was nearby. Our train is working hard as it approaches the line's summit. The line skirts the reservoir at Cray. And in due course, reaches the outskirts of Brecon and enters Brecon Free Street Station. Eighty seven sixty runs round her train to be ready for the return journey to Neath. Swindon Bill Ivert Mogul, four six five oh seven, arrives at Brecon with the four oh five PM train from Hereford. Another member of the class waits in the bay with a 6 p.m. train for Hereford.
Tanya tank 4611, lurking in the sidings alongside the bay, will work the 615 train to Newport as one of Free Street Station's busier periods continues. p.m. for Neath is the first to depart, followed shortly afterwards by the Newport service, which should have left before the Neath train at 6.15 p.m. Number 4611 leaves Brecon to travel the four and a half miles to Talachlin Junction, whose platforms are at the eastern end of Talachlin Tunnel. Built originally by the Hay Tram Road in 1816 and later enlarged by the Brecon and Merthyr in 1863. The driver collects a token for the first section to Talibont on Usk. From Talibont, the line faced an awesome climb seven miles long, with a ruling gradient of one in 38, which was broken only by a short level stretch through the remote station and block post of Pentaru. From there the line skirted the two mile long reservoir built by Newport Waterworks in the 1930s. The train enters Torpanto Tunnel, which marks the summit of the climb from Talibont. At Torpanto Station, a train for Brecon headed by Pannier Tank number 9638 waits our arrival before it can proceed. Constickel Junction at one time offered services to Merthyr and Dowlais as well as Newport. The Brecon to Newport train leaves the junction headed by 4611. On the 8th of December 1962, the 11.15am leaves Newport High Street bound for Brecon, headed by Collet 060, number 2298. At Mesa Cummer, the Brecon and Merthyr passes under the Vale of Neath line on which was located Crumlin Viaduct, seen earlier. The line to the right beyond Bargoed Station headed up the Rumney Valley to Rumney Bridge on the Heads of the Valleys line. On a damp and grey December day, the train calls it Vachru Station. The train passes over the track bed of the Heads of the Valleys line, built by the LNWR to expand its influence in South Wales, already closed and lifted by this date. Tokens are exchanged at Dowlais Top. At Torpanto, we cross Pannier Tank number 4611 on the 1215 Brecon to Newport train. The train enters Torpanta Tunnel. Once through the tunnel, trains for Brecon could coast down the seven mile bank to Talibont on Us. Part of the Brecon and Merthyr formation from Ponstickel to Pant is used today by the narrow gauge trains of the Brecon Mountain Railway. Plans exist to extend these tracks up through the tunnel to a terminus at Glen Cochlan. So it is pleasant to record that the sound of a steam locomotive hard at work is still heard in these lovely surroundings. On the way down the bank, the train passes through Pentru. And after crossing over the Brecon and Abergavenny Canal, it arrives at Talibontonusk. In 
In September 1962, 060-2247 leaves Taliban bound for Brecon. Next arrival at the station is a pannier tank hauling an inspection saloon. 22.47 reappears with a train from Brecon to Newport. We now have some line-side sequences on the former Brecon and Merthyr line, which feature trains working hard on the final stretch of the seven-mile bank on the approach to Torpantau Tunnel. The former Great Western 060-2247 heads the first of these trains. Steam leaking from its cylinder glands, another member of the class is having a struggle to get up the bank to the summit. Wisps of steam in the distance and the sound of an engine working hard and gradually getting closer signal the next train tackling the climb. Two two forty seven, going slowly but surely, brings her three coach train into Torpantau Tunnel. For our final sequences on the Brecon and Mertha, we go back to Talatlin Junction, whose triangular layout permitted trains from the north to run either through Talatlin Tunnel to Brecon or avoiding Brecon south towards Talabont. A train from Moat Lane Junction, which was near Karasus on the Cambrian line from Shrewsbury to Aberystwyth, arrives at Tarachlin Junction on its way to Brecon. Fifty seven XX Pannier Tank, nine double six seven, brings the twelve fifteen Brecon to Newport into the station. Its arrival permits the Brecon-bound train to enter the single-line tunnel. The token is collected, allowing the train to enter the section to Talibant. Talibont, the token for the next single line section to Pente Rouge collected, and the Pania tank begins the attack on the seven mile bank. The loco climbs steadily to Penteru, where a party of Boy Scouts who have been camping locally provide an unusually busy scene on the platform. Many of the scattered communities served by this station literally disappeared underwater when the nearby reservoir was built in the 1930s. The climb up the bank is resumed and completed in the tunnel. From Torpanta onwards, it's downhill all the way. The signpost at Tarachlin Junction directs us to the next part of our programme as we explore the lines north from the junction to Heonwai and Moat Lane Junction.
North from Tarraflin Junction, a line eventually owned by the Cambrian Railway ran first to Three Cox Junction and then on through Bilth Wells and the Ryder to Moat Lane Junction on the Cambrian route to Aberystwyth and Pulthelly. This line made a junction with the London and North Western Railway's Central Wales Line from Swansea to Craven Arms at Bilth Road. From Three Cox Junction, the Midland Railway-owned line to Hereford struck off, a distant tentacle of the railway's empire based on Derby by which, through running powers over the Neatham Brecon, the Midland kept a tenuous contact with its lines in and around Swansea, acquired to get for that company a slice of the lucrative traffic in the coal fields of South Wales. The 125 train from Brecon to Moat Lane Junction arrives at Tarraflin Junction. The loco is one of the Swindon-built Ivert moguls, which were used extensively on these lines. One of these locomotives, 46521, which was based at Brecon for many years, is now a regular performer on the Seven Valley Railway. Cows on the line impede progress towards Three Cox Junction, where the train duly arrives. The line straight ahead is to Hereford. That to the left leads through Mid Wales to Moat Lane Junction. Another Ivert mobile awaits our arrival with the 1230 train from Bilth Road to Brecon. whilst on the other platform the 2.15 p.m. train to Hereford can be glimpsed. On the Hereford line, a pickup goods headed by a BR standard mogul 78004, a class virtually identical to the Ivert moguls, passes through Whitney on Wye. The distinctive Midland Railway signal box at Hay on Wye confirms the line's former ownership. An Ivert mogul arrives with a passenger train for Hereford. Passenger services on both this route and the Mid Wales line ended on the 31st of December 1962. Leaving Three Cox Junction, we are now heading north into the heart of Mid Wales. The first station was Bookrood and Liswen. Though filmed in the month of closure, a considerable number of passengers are awaiting at Aberdu. The train arrives at Bilth Wells, where all traces of the railway have now been completely obliterated. On the approach to Bilth Road low level, the steam of a Shrewsbury-bound train on the Central Wales Line, the only railway route in these parts to survive Dr. Beeching's axe, can be seen. This provides a suitable opportunity for us to change trains and look at the Central Wales Line in the days of steam. What was to become the Central Wales Line was constructed in stages by a number of independent railway companies. The earliest of these, the Llanechli Railway and Dock Company, was incorporated in 1835. The line ran from Swansea through Llandavri and Llandridnod Wells to Craven Arms on the Shrewsbury to Hereford route. There was a connecting line from Llandilo to Camarthen. The line opened throughout in June 1868, and from the beginning it was worked by the London and North Western, which had backed the various companies involved in its construction. These were shortly afterwards absorbed by the LNWR. Edwin Wilmshurst's film of this line begins at Abergwilly Junction, outside Camarthen. The second station on this line was Nant Gary Dig. The line from Clandilo to Camarthen closed to passengers in September 1963.
Achlan Dilo, an XLMS 8F, is seen on a goods train, whilst a British Railway Standard Class 4, 264 tank, 80134, arrives with a Swansea to Shrewsbury train. The train passes over the elegant Kanghordi Viaduct. The railway is now rising steeply on a gradient of 1 in 60 towards the 1,000 yard long tunnel through the Sugarloaf Mountain and the summit of the line, which is just beyond the tunnel. This is Bulth Road High Level. The spur to the left of the signal box ran down to the former Cambrian line between Tarach Lynn to Moat Lane Junction. At Bilth Road High Level, Ostania Black 5 460, number 45190, takes water whilst working a Shrewsbury to Swansea train. This is the low-level station at Bilth Road, at which we arrived earlier in the programme. Back at the high-level station, a train for Shrewsbury arrives behind a British Railway Standard Class 5, 460. St. Dreadnought Wells, about five and a half miles north of Bilth Road, was a spa town which prospered with the coming of the railway. The line serving the up platform was taken out of use and dismantled in December 1955, but was reinstated in April 1986. The train passes over one of the best known features of the line, Nucleus Viaduct with its castellated embellishments, and into Nucleus, the last station in Wales. The town of Knighton is in Wales, but its station is in England. The 12 and a half miles from here to Craven Arms was doubled in 1871, but singled in 1965 when the line was being rationalised. The Central Wales line today may be a shadow of its former self. It is, however, still with us, unlike most of the lines featured in this programme. And a run from Shrewsbury to Swansea is still a railway experience to savour. We will now complete our coverage of the Cambrian Mid Wales Line, this time starting at Moat Lane Junction. 7802 Bradley Manor, now preserved on the Seven Valley Railway, leaves Moat Lane Junction with the 9.20 a.m. Aberystwyth to Shrewsbury train on the 4th of August 1962. An unidentified manor arrives at Moat Lane Junction before the train to Brecon departs. Ivert Mogul 46511 leaves a substantial station at Sir Midlois with the 8.03 a.m. train for Moat Lane Junction. Southbound train calls at Tulloch. Near Ryder were the Elam Valley Reservoirs, constructed by Birmingham Corporation to supply that distant city with water at the end of the last century. Ivert Mogul 46511 brings a northbound service into the station. Some passenger services began and terminated at Bilth Wells. 
where a small engine shed, a subshed of Brecon 89B was located. The loco here is Ivert Mogul number 46523. Burra Wood was roughly halfway between Bilf Wells and Three Cox Junction. At Three Cox Junction, a couple of passengers move across to the Herryford Line platform for a connecting service which has not yet arrived. Approaching Tallaghlin Junction from the north, the line straight ahead allowed trains to avoid the station and head directly towards Merthyr and Newport. Our train, bound for Brecon, heads to the right and arrives at the station. The third side of the triangular junction was formed by the lines to the left of the departing train, which were used by trains from Brecon to Talibont and beyond. Mogul number 46520 heads the 5.05 p.m. Brecon to Moat Lane Junction service. Around this curve comes a 57XX pannier 3700 with a train from Newport to Brecon. Into Talachlin Tunnel and back to Brecon for one last time. As Nivert Mogul arrives with a train from Hereford, we will now head into North Wales for the final part of our programme. In the last part of our Welsh Odyssey, we are going to follow the final passenger train on the former Great Western branch from Bala to Blaenau Festiniog. A line ran from Ruabon on the Shrewsbury to Chester route, Bachlan Gochlan to Barmouth Junction on the Cambrian coastline. A branch off this line, which diverged at Bala Junction, headed over the hills to Blaenau Festiniog, where it made an end-on connection with the former London and North Western branch from Llandidno Junction. Ruabon on a dreary 22nd of January 1961. The special train, organised by the Stevenson Locomotive Society, awaits the arrival of the connecting train from London, which soon appears. Behind Hall Class 460-5926, Grotrian Hall, the passengers rush across to get good seats on the train to Blaina. The train heads up the valley of the River Dee. Part of this line has been rebuilt reopened by the Llangochlan Railway. Keith Christie chased a special in the Land Rover along the narrow roads and tracks which followed the line. Here having left the line to the coast at Bala Junction and passed through Bala itself, the train begins the long climb up to Cumpraiso, the eight mile slog to the summit has the pair of pannier tanks led by 4645 working hard. The train nears the end of the climb as it approaches the remote halt of Cumpraiso. This area is now underwater. Llyn which is seen in these pictures, has been extended to form the Triwerin Reservoir. The engines are able to take a breather once the summit has been passed. Here they negotiate one of the most spectacular parts of the line, where the railway is perched high on a ledge at a spot known as Craig Aderin, the Eagle's Rock. The 
train goes down towards Trasvaneth as it passes through the station, with the gantry being used in the construction of the new nuclear power station, can be glimpsed behind the train. The special continues its journey. It is seen here near Mainturog Road. Special arrives at Belaino Festinio. The reminders of this North Wales Slate Town's other railway, the narrow gauge line to Port Maddock, can be seen as the pannier tanks run round their train. We began this programme at a location which was to become a mecca for railway enthusiasts, Budley on the Seven Valley branch. It is appropriate to end it at what was to become another such place of pilgrimage. The Festiniog Railway was to suffer many setbacks before its trains proudly steamed into Blaina Festiniog. In 1955, part of the original route had been submerged by the reservoir of a hydroelectric power station. It was to be May 1982 before the first Festiniog train steamed into the new station at Blaina, beside that of the BR branch from Clandidno Junction. As the special steamed away from Blaina, in the gathering gloom of a January afternoon, all of that was for the future. <laughs>